chills run down your spine. You break into a cold sweat. Your heart begins to pound. You are afraid. Tonight, on scariest places on Earth, Alcatraz is the most frightening spot I've been in. The secret dungeons of Alcatraz. A haunted luxury liner. Queen Mary is the most haunted place in the world. This is the vortex. This is the dimensional entrance from their dimension into ours. An underground death chamber. We started hearing things, all different kinds of things. And Chillingham Castle. The Olsen family enters and the doors are locked. I hear screaming, fine. Welcome to the castle. Please, come in. is it that makes a place scary? When people hear the name Alcatraz, they most often think of the horrors of life on the rock. But what most don't know is beneath the prison, in the bowels of the island, there's an area far worse called the dungeons. Alcatraz was once home to the most dangerous criminals in America. Since it closed in 1963, paranormal investigators have determined that the prison is haunted. Alcatraz is the most frightening spot I've been in. disturbed, very, very disturbed energy. This room collected a lot of horror. Pain and a lot of screaming. A group of students set out for Alcatraz to investigate the supernatural activity for themselves. Well, I'm psyched to go to Alcatraz, you know? Have you ever been there before? Never! Wow. Look at it. As scary as I think it would be, I want to meet something. It would be kind of disappointing to go all the way out there and then not have anything happen, I think. It has to be haunted. There's probably some unhappy spirits over there. But then what really can a ghost do to you? The students were about to find out. Their guide was a man with inside knowledge of the prison. This was my cell right there, B204. I spent four and a half years in there. I wasn't scared by the prisoners, but a lot of little weird things used to go on in this prison. I used to hear all these strange noises. This is called a strip cell. It's the dark cell. The guy that was in there was screaming that someone was in there with him. And the guards just laughed it off. Finally, three days later, they opened the door, and there was nobody else in there but this one person, and he was laying there dead. So uh, he wasn't imagining something was in there. Who or what, uh, you'll never know. I just imagine the way this guy felt. 
It's just the darkest, coldest, worst pit of hell. I can't stand it anymore. I felt insanity in there. I felt insanity? Insanity. If the door had been locked on me. I've heard some really weird things about the hospital. I'm really nervous. Okay. It's very stinky. Ew, my imagination is going wild. Ew, this is like a science fiction movie. Look at this. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm up here by myself. I feel like they did lobotomies or something up here. Okay. I'm closing myself in here. I have to know what it feels like. Strange condensation seemed to be coming from beneath the floor. So weird. What would cause such a thing? Hidden under the condensation are the remains of the Citadel, a brutal Civil War prison that inmates called the Dungeons. Just a sitting room on here. Jim Cook was in the Confederate Army. He killed this colonel and his family, cut them all up, and he threw them down here. And uh, they uh, pulled his body all apart down there. And uh, I understand it took three days for him to die, but pieces of them were scattered all over the place down there. And uh, if you guys want to get down there, go ahead, but I ain't going down there with you. It is said the vengeful ghost of Jim Cook haunts the dark corridors of the Citadel to this day. changed me. It's had a profound impact as far as uh, how I view uh, the past and the present. Well, it definitely was an experience. I, I'm, I'm always going to remember it, that's for sure. I have been many places in my life, and I've never felt anything like Alcatraz. Ghost on the Queen Mary. I was just just felt something touch me on my left arm. Something yeah. is here, right here. And Chillingham Castle. 
the Olsen family enters and the doors are locked. Welcome to the castle. You gotta be brave. We dared an American family to spend a night in one of England's most haunted places. The Olsen family is now inside the walls of Chillingham Castle. The doors are locked. There's no escape. For the Olsons, the time of reckoning has come, and there's no turning back. It is said, be gone from Chillingham by nightfall, or you will have to contend with the evil forces that walk amongst us. You must go down this road and you must follow the flame. When you reach the flame, you will see the castle door and you will go through that door. The Olsen's journey to the castle takes them down the mile-long road called the Devil's Pathway. Okay, Jer, what are you feeling right now, buddy? I think you screwed us. Did you hear that? Yes. I got this in like a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. Well, it'll be all right. We're all right. So far, so good. It's not quite dark out yet. <laughs> because it's not quite dark yet, so it's okay. <laughs> got a long walk. Okay, honey. What do you think? Maybe it is right I think we'll find not. something. I think we'll really find some. The fire's gonna be out by the time we get there. Do you think that guy was, like, real? I don't like what he was able to tell by looking in my eyes. He was freaky. He said, I've come close to death, and I'm very close to believing this. He was way too freaky. Oh, can you actually see the castle? I hear shots in the back. Did you hear that? Here we go. My dark finger vest. You see something? What do we see? Dave, stop trailing. Jeez. Yes, I'm coming. You see me rocking in a corner, Lee. Does anybody see anything? Is anybody... <laughs> God. Okay, come on. Let's just go. Are you guys going to check it out or what? No! Don't. Come on, David. Come, come this way. You are recording? David? Come on, sweetie. Come this way. David, we gotta go to the fire. The flame? Yes. Hang on, hang on. It's not a normal color for flame. Take it from a fireman who knows. We can, do you hear that? Yes, I hear it. I hear screaming. Be quiet. Listen. No, it's not a bird. A voice? Somebody's screaming. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay, Jared. <laughs> No, seriously. I think we're hearing. Oh, hey, look at this. <gasps> Ew. And it's a head on a stick. It's a devil's head. What is going to happen, and I don't know what we got into. Okay, to the door. Oh my god, this thing is huge. 
Yes, you have to go in. There's the front doors. And the only way to know what's in there is to go in there. So I'm going in. Welcome to the castle. Oh boy. I guess at some point you gotta be brave. Hello. Welcome to Chillingham Castle. Please, come in. Throughout history, we build on the past to create the future. But the past can harbor many dark and dangerous secrets, as was discovered in a hidden underground city far beneath the streets of Edinburgh, Scotland. Edinburgh, Scotland. Three young people videotape their vacation. <laughs> Traditional Highland dress. <laughs> That's Alexander the Great. The three travelers had heard stories about the mysterious world of underground Edinburgh. They found one of the few entrances that led to the dark old city. Three were startled by the sound of what they believed was a woman in agony. went in there, me and the two ladies, my friends, and we were just checking it out. We started hearing things, all different kinds of things, and it was just coming through the walls. It was freaky, really scary.
In the early 17th century, underground areas of Edinburgh became a ghetto for the poor and the sick. Eventually, those who lived in the underground fell victim to the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague in Europe wiped out whole communities. Perhaps as many as half died through the plague, brought by the rats, spread like wildfire. The plague of 1645 was not by any means the first experience of the plague for the people of Edinburgh. They had suffered before, but nothing on a scale like this. There were whole areas of the city that were stick it up, which means closed up, boarded up, sealed off. People were effectively quarantined into their homes, were not allowed to leave, and were just left to die. And people said they could hear scratching coming from the inside of the doors. The plague killed most of the inhabitants of the underground. Soon after, it became a refuge for thieves and murderers fleeing the law. Because of the plague, because of murders, we have some very unhappy things that have happened in Edinburgh. It has produced a lot of memories that have gone into the psychic world. You go in and there's a long corridor just leading down. Then on the left and right hand side, there's bolts going off. And the last one where that circle was, that was the scariest one. Two of Scotland's leading psychics were brought in to investigate the mysterious sounds heard at the Circle of Stones. Since I was a very young child, I was seeing and hearing spirit boys and receiving premonitions. Ordinary drawing, I started at three. But at the same time, there was an inner world that was getting drawn. There was things going on in this part of the place, I feel. A sense of struggle. It's just layers and layers of life on top of life. The investigators found intense psychic energy. It's an energy place. There's a lot of energy in it. This is a circle or a coven or whatever they've used it for. Everything's gone, just memories, just stains, just... <sighs> Dranma used her canvas to illustrate her psychic impressions. It just has very, very strong energy in this room. It's a real buzz. It's like even with my eyes closed, I can see lots of faces coming forward. Real feeling of fear, there's a real feeling of angst. But you know, I'm hearing a name and I don't know if it's Bridie or, you know, like Bridget. 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 This lady that I'm seeing got a very nasty end. Suddenly, another face emerged from the past. It's like, oh, they're feeling a, a man, a very angry man. Aggression, there's something sinister. My hands are tied. I start feeling my head going back like that. I feel as though the throat was cut. Yeah. Or... I feel as though the connection being that he took her life. You're dealing with flashes of memory and, and that seemed to be the most predominant sort of flash, a scene of history or something that you're tuning into. The funny thing is, drawing that, it was a nice smooth feel when I was drawing. My hand felt slower and smooth. Drawing this, it had a different feeling.
The psychics believe that this is the face of a murderer. Yeah. A vicious murder may have gone unsolved, but the psychics believe the terrible energy from the crime lingers. down by myself ever ever coming up next a cursed cemetery and they look like a monster there is a presence amongst us look at the fever it's like it was hacked off a haunted luxury liner it's one of the worst naval disasters of all time we split her right in half. A horrific collision at sea between two ships left a dark legacy and over 300 men dead. The unsettled souls of those who died are still longing to rest in peace. Just ask visitors to the Queen Mary. Long Beach, California. For decades, visitors to the Queen Mary have seen and heard ghosts roaming its lower levels. Hello? Speak to me. I have investigated hundreds of haunted places over the years, and in my opinion, the Queen Mary is the most haunted place in the world. Ghosts have been reported on the Queen Mary since 1942, when the ship was involved in a tragic accident. It's one of the worst naval disasters of all time. We were off the coast of Ireland. We're carrying troops back to America. When we accidentally ran into one of our own escort ships. It was the HMS Carousel. The carousel must have got its coordinates mixed up because all of a sudden it was right in front of us. It had no business being there, but there it was. Bam. We hit her. We split her right in half. 338 British sailors lost their lives. This year, a technical team joined psychic Peter James aboard the Queen Mary to search for proof of paranormal activity. And I've got, these are like backup batteries just in case. If there was any possible way to catch what could not be seen with the naked eye on film, that was what I was after. I arrived at the Queen Mary with a lot of high-tech sound gear uh, to follow Peter James around and see if it was haunted. I wanted to know why. But we're setting up our gear, we're getting ready to go in. But in the back of our minds, I think we're all thinking about that horrible accident that happened in 1942. After we struck her, I looked over the side of the Queen Mary. They were screaming for help. Sometimes late at night, you can still hear them. Level 12. Hello? Well, we go in there with Peter, and almost immediately, he starts hearing all these ghosts, these entities. I was just, just felt something touch me on my left arm just now. Feel this. Something yeah. is here, right here. A cold area is usually indicative of a ghost presence. And now it's very cold right here. Yes, yes, it's right here. Yeah. Level eight. Well, we went down to the pool area with Peter. There was a complete change in the atmosphere. It made the hair on my arm stand up. 
The first class swimming pool has a vortex. Hundreds of entities that are on the ship. This is where they enter from and leave from. Sometimes it's 20 to 30 degrees colder here. Really? Yes. This is the vortex. This is the dimensional entrance from their dimension into ours. Peter showed us the vortex, but I still didn't quite believe it. I took some footage of it, um, didn't see anything unusual in my viewfinder. But then I came back to look at my footage, and I saw this. So I've heard that entities give off a magnetic force, and that's the only thing I can come up with as a reason for the disturbance. And it went away as soon as I shot somewhere other than the vortex. Both sides of the Queen Mary had men in the water. They were kicking and clawing and trying to push away, but the draft from the Queen Mary sucked them right under the boat. Many of them went right through the propellers. Level five. We were headed down to the bows of the ship where the Queen Mary struck the curacao. Peter was the first to hear something. Listen, listen. Hello? I go over to where he's kind of guiding me to hear things. I don't hear anything. I take the tape back to my studio. I start hearing this noise. I couldn't hear it when I was there, but it's on the tape. I don't know what it is. We're about 50 feet below water level. We kept going deeper into the lower part of the Queen Mary. It was disturbing. There was just kind of the stillness that was there. And it was like a tomb. Were you hearing that at all? Were you hearing the knocking? Right over here. We came to this hatch, and we finally get it open. Wow. You smell it from there? Oh, it's rank land in there, man. It's, what does it it's smell stanky. like? I don't know. I backed away because of the smell of the hatch. And so I decided to point my camera in that direction just to see if I pick up on anything. And as I'm moving forward... Ew. I feel this ice-cold touch on the back of my neck. And I look around. Scott is has left, he's nowhere to be seen, and there's no explanation for, for what that was. And I think that's when I realized there's something really strange going on here. Now I'm jumpy. Yeah, let's it's get funny. out of I here. Went from like, I went from like perfectly fine to like jumpy. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was something from the past. I couldn't help but think about all those servicemen. Most of the sailors were still in the water when the carousel went down. They were screaming at us to stop, begging us for help, pleading with their eyes. Our orders were clear. Full steam ahead. We couldn't stop for anything or for anyone. I finally, I couldn't even watch anymore. I had to turn away. That sound, those voices. I think I'll hear that sound forever. So I theorized that these crewmen, in their consciousness of 50 more years ago, they're about to drown. And most are not aware of being dead. They will continue as long as the Queen Mary is here. Coming up next, America's most haunted city. Savannah is a major portal for spirit activity. A strange encounter with the spirit world. And we were right here. In one of the pictures, there's a figure standing beside us. It's not in the other pictures. The picture right behind it has nothing. It's 
hard not to get seduced by the homespun charm of the deep south. But the south is also home to tales of angry ghosts and creatures of the night. Keep that in mind when you're visiting Savannah, Georgia, one of the scariest places on earth. most haunted city. Savannah is a major portal for spirit activity. I definitely think Savannah is a haunted city. I do feel that there is something more than what we can touch and smell and feel. I would think there is as many spirits as there are people in Savannah, if not more. Every block in Savannah has a ghost. Savannah is famous for its cemeteries. Colonial Park Cemetery, it's a haunting cemetery. And it was here that the hangings, the executions took place. Recently, two Savannah residents visited Colonial Park Cemetery and had a strange encounter with the spirit world. Well, we were over here with friends and we were taking pictures by the back wall. And we were right here. You can see clearly in one of the pictures that there's a figure standing beside us. It's not in the other pictures. The picture right behind it has nothing. The photograph is, is near the oldest part of the cemetery, near the old wall. A lot of ghostly activity there. Especially what comes to mind because of the proportion of the figure is the spirit of Rene, the cemetery's most famous ghost. The shocking story of Rene, known as the Frankenstein of Savannah, began in the 1700s. He was identified by newspapers as being about seven foot four, 390 pounds. Physically, Rene uh, looked like a monster. It's not known whether he was retarded, whether he was mentally ill. He was also violent, and he would chase neighborhood kids around the block. Rene was kept locked away behind the walls of Colonial Park Cemetery, which became known as Rene's Playground. He was blamed for the murder of two sisters. Their bodies were found in the cemetery, and because of his history in the cemetery, he's sort of the immediate target and uh, a mob basically lynches him down near the riverfront. Jerome, Kendall, and their friends set out to explore the cemetery and solve the mystery of the photograph. Well, this is Colonial Park Cemetery, also known as Renee's Playground. His spirit is seen here repeatedly, even up to the present day. A 200-year-old statue commemorates one of the children Rene allegedly murdered. Rene's spirit has often been sighted here contemplating her. Locals believe when Rene's ghost is near, the statue becomes lifelike. It's almost as if she feels warm to the touch, as if actual blood flows beneath her skin. Your hands are wet. Oh, Your hands are wet. In the past, Renee's spirit was sighted in a secret tunnel beneath the cemetery. Before entering the tunnel, the group met with a spiritual medium. Colonial Park Cemetery is a very active cemetery. There are entities that are here, and tonight they're very active because the moon is full. 
The medium conducted a seance to summon Renee's ghost to the cemetery tunnel. All we want you to do, Renee, is to appear. Renee? Renee, is that you? Are you here with us? Give us a sign that you're still in our presence. There is a presence amongst us. Renee's underground lair. believed Renee would enter the tunnel to feed on the dead. Oh my god, look at that. It's like a, f a femur. Damp, musty bones. It is. It's strange the way it's cut. It looks like it was hacked off. At the very end of the tunnel, there's a legendary cold spot. Some call it the presence of Re Renee. Some are very, very overwhelmed by it. So when you go down there, I want you to sort of brace yourself. All right. It's definitely pretty chilly. So we took these pictures. And we really didn't see anything that night, but we went and we got the pictures developed. And there's one distinct picture over near the side of the wall. You can definitely see something. There's something there. Maybe it's Renee. So what is it that makes a place scary? Quite often, it's terrifying occurrences that challenge the very foundation of what we know and understand. Dark surprises, that's what you'll find in the scariest places on Earth. I'm Linda Blair. Good night.